Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about compass bearings. Now for those who are not really sure about what bearings are, bearings pretty much give us uh, positioning of a particular object in terms of an angle. So bearings, remember, you have to start from north and then we go always go in a clockwise direction. So say for example if I'm here, that's my starting point, and my finishing point is here, what I do is I simply draw a straight line between them so I know what the distance is. And remember guys, to find the distance, uh, sorry, find the bearing of the finishing point from the starting point, we always start from north directly. So from my starting point, I always draw north, yeah? And then from that, we go in a clockwise direction like this. So this angle here, whatever that is, I'll just make it say 40 degrees. I can say that I am in a finishing point where it's 40 degrees from my starting point and whatever that distance is, that's also part of the positioning as well. So that's the kind of idea of bearings for those who are still a bit unsure of it. But today we're going to be going specifically into compass bearings. Now in a compass we have north, east, south, west. I don't know if you guys remember the order. The order is very, very important. North, east, south, west. I like to remember it as never eat soggy wheat bix. I don't know, you can find your own way of memorizing it, but make sure you get the order very, very strictly correct. But anyway, we've got those. So if I say I'm northeast, I'm right in the middle of north and east. So right in that direction, we call northeast, in between north and east. In between south and east, we call it southeast. In between south and west, we've got southwest. And in between north and west, we've got northwest. And as you can see, North and south always come first. So it's northeast, northwest, or southeast, southwest. It's always south or north first. Make sure you remember that. So if I want to find the positioning of this particular point, I'd go, let's say that is 45 degrees. If it's directly northeast, it's always half of 90 degrees, isn't it? So that's 45 and that's 45, right? But if I ask you for what the compass bearing is of this particular point, it would be south. 45 degrees east, like that. Make sense, guys? So always start from south or north, whatever positioning is. So think about where it's in between. All right, guys, so compass bearings uses the four directions of the compass. As I said, it's got north, south, east, and west. And we've got the middle points, uh, midpoints there, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. Easy stuff, right? So let's get into the questions, guys. Question one, state the compass bearing of A. So see how it's in between north and east? So we're gonna be using northeast. And you can see that it's 52 degrees northeast. So we say north, 52 degrees east. We always put that angle in between the north and the east. So that's how you would write it. Question two, state the compass bearing of this one. See how A is between S and E, so south and east? So remember how we always put south first or north first, but in this case we must put south first, don't we? And you can see it's 55 degrees in the direction of east. So we say simply south 55 degrees east, so S 55 degrees east. That's what you need to do. Question three, state the compass bearing of using southwest. So even if it doesn't say that, you know that it's in between south and west. And remember guys, we always start from north or south. So in this case, would have to start from south, right? Because we're in between south and west. So remember, as I said, because we start from south, we have to find how much from south it is towards the west direction. So we have to find this much angle. Okay, so not that angle. Make sure you don't say south 33 degrees west because that's wrong. What you're gonna find is that angle there where it starts from south. So we know that this full angle is 90 degrees. So this little angle here would be 90 degrees minus the 33 degrees, which we get as 57 degrees. So it's gonna be south 57 degrees, which is this angle here, which I calculated using this, and then towards west southwest 57 degrees okay guys so some of these you might have to do extra calculations like what i did here question four using uh state the compass bearing uses northeast because it's in between north and east so as i keep repeating guys we start from north or south so they give us an angle here that's 20 degrees but then that's not the positioning starting from north we start from north and then go in a clockwise direction so 
we actually want this angle here. So from north and how much it goes towards the east direction. So that one here, again, this whole angle is 90 degrees, it's a right angle. So this angle that we're looking for must be right angle of 90 degrees minus the given angle of 20 degrees, which is 70 degrees. So it's going to be north, 70 degrees east. Make sense, guys? So hopefully you know why we are starting from north. Yeah, because we want northeast. Question five, state the compass bearing using northwest, because as you can see, it's in between north and west. Again, we start from north. Now I know that I keep telling you that bearings must go in a clockwise direction, but this does not really necessarily apply for compass bearings, because it always starts from north or south. So in this particular case, we start from north and we want to know how much it goes towards the west direction. So we want this angle there. So in compass bearings, don't put too much concern on the fact that we must go clockwise. Not in this kind of case. So that's the angle that we want because we want to know the angle that it goes towards the west from north. So we want that angle. So again, this is our usual right angle of 90 degrees. So that angle there would be right angle 90 degrees minus the given angle 35 degrees, which we obtain 55 degrees. So it's going to be north 55 degrees towards west. So it's written like that. Can you see it guys? So hopefully you're getting the hang of this already. It's not too hard at all. Six, state the compass bearing. Okay, so if I ask you what the direction of e, um, sorry, A is, it's from north and it's going towards the west direction, so it's northwest. And it's given us the angle, 78. Starting from north towards west, it's 78 degrees. So we simply write north 78 degrees west. Easy stuff. Question seven, state the compass bearing. Okay, so we are at A here. Now guys, what I'm gonna do is show you a little trick here where I'm gonna draw in my little axis there. It's a bit crooked, sorry. But as you can see, we've got north, never eat soggy wheat bix. Okay, that's just how I like to memorize it. Um, so, as you can see guys, if this is the center point, the A, what direction is that in? It's in between south and west, isn't it? So it must be in a southwest direction. So what we need to do is, we remember how we always start south in this case. So from south, I wanna know how much it goes towards the west direction. So I want this particular angle here. Yeah, and how do I calculate that? It tells us this full reflex angle is 250 degrees. Now guys, I know that from north to south like that directly, this angle here is 180, isn't it? That full straight line is always 180 degrees. Remember a straight line? It's supplementary. So this one must be 180. But if this entire angle is 250 and we just want that bit, we have to subtract away the straight line, don't we? So it's going that angle there would be 250 degrees, which is the full reflex angle that we want, and we eliminate the full straight line angle, which is 180 degrees. So 250 minus 180 must give you 70. So it's south, west, south, 70 degrees, west, okay? And that's how we obtain it. So again, you might have to do some extra calculation. And if you're a bit unsure about the direction, draw in the rest of southeast North, north, east, south, west remaining and then you can put the axes in and you can see directly where the positioning is. Okay, so that's a little method to do it. Okay, question eight. Sketch the compass bearing of north 10 degrees east. Okay, so it's in a northeast direction. So we draw our, if you like, you can just start off with the compass. Never eat soggy wheat. Never eat soggy wheat fix. You can start off with that and then just position it. So this is what I've got. I've got my... Um, compass axis there and 10 degrees is a small angle here like that and it goes towards in this direction and if you like you can put a little point there and label it A up to you but you don't necessarily have to but as long as you get that angle right north east 10 degrees we start from north towards east 10 degrees that's how we do it so it's very very simple okay let's try another sketch sketch the compass bearing of south 
25 west. So we're going in the southwest direction. So we're right here between south and west. And from south, we go 25 degrees towards the west. 10. Sketch the compass bearing of north 60 degrees west. So we're going in a northwest direction. So if you draw your compass, it's going towards the northwest direction in between north and west. And from north, we want to go 60 degrees towards the west direction. So you label that bit 60. Okay, sketch the compass bearing of south 42 degrees east. So it's southeast. So we must be here in between south and east. And from start, we remember we start from south. Towards east, we go 42 degrees. So that's where you put the labeling. Okay, let's try a little bit more of a practical question. A ship sails five meters west, then five meters south. Find the compass bearing of the ship from its original position. Okay, so let's actually draw a diagram. I'll sh show you how to draw the diagram together. So in this kind of question, the first thing I would do is draw up a diagram. That's what I highly recommend. So a ship starts, sorry, sails five meters west. So let's just start off with a starting point. I just like to put a dot in the middle of my page and then make that my starting point. So I'll, I'll label it S. Now it sails five meters west. Now guys, in the question, when it says it sails five meters west, it means directly west. So it's not just in a west direction anywhere. It's directly west. So, remember west is this way? That's where I'm become. Okay, so it sails five meters, so I'm gonna label that five meters. Make sense, guys? Now, then, five meters south. South, it means directly south. Not anywhere in the south direction, just directly south. So right underneath that, we go down, and I'll put there, that's gonna be five meters as well. Makes sense, guys? So it's very simple. And because it's directly west and directly south, it's going to be a right angle. Now find the compass bearing of the ship from its original position. So finishing point is here. I'll label it F, F for finishing. Um, so I'll just join this up so I can make a little triangle. And it says find the compass bearing of the ship from its original position. So from there, we want to know what that is, right? And you can see, guys, if you draw in the remaining like axes, Never eat, soggy, and west is here. See that is, this finishing point is in between south and west, isn't it? So we want this angle here, I'll call it theta, that particular angle. Now, guys, the produced triangle is an isosceles triangle. So see my triangle here? This is five and this is five, two sides are equal. So therefore this triangle is considered to be an isosceles triangle. Now. Remember, in an isosceles triangle, the base angles are equal. So these two angles must be equal, isn't it? So what we can do is, what's the angle sum of a triangle, guys? 180. So if I subtract away the right angle, which is 90 degrees, and divide it up by two, I can get each of these values, don't I? Because they're gonna be equal. That's what I'm gonna do. So theta, actually I'll call this one be theta for now. Um, this one here. These are gonna be both theaters. Okay, hope you can kind of see my diagram. You can drop your own if you're a bit confused with mine, but these angles I'm gonna call theta. So theta is going to be a full triangle, which is 180 degrees, minus away the right angle, so 90 degrees, and then I'm gonna halve it. So I divided it by two to get each of these angles because I know that they're identical. So I've got theta is gonna be 45 if you calculate that. So this theta is 45. I'll just put, on, put a labeling there. 45 degrees. So, but remember guys, we're interested in this particular angle from south towards the west direction. And because this is completely 90 degrees, I can get the compass bearing, which is um, 180, sorry, sorry, 90 minus the 45. So this is obtained by getting 90 degrees minus 45 degrees because it's that angle there. So it's south, 45 degrees, that one there is 45 degrees towards the west, so it's S, 45 degrees west. Makes sense, guys? So there's a bit of working there. I try to explain a little bit more de in detail just so you get the idea of what's happening in every single little step. But hopefully you guys won't have to take too much time in that. But make sure, guys, the diagram really does help, so make sure you draw up a good diagram as well. So that's the compass bearing, okay? So that was question 12.
I think we might spend a bit of time doing another one, another fractal question. These are good questions because they're very exam style. Okay, Jane runs a distance of 7.2 meters in the southeast direction. Now guys, when it means southeast, it means directly southeast. Okay, right in the middle of south and east. How far east has Jane run? Let's draw it up again. So, again, I'm going to find any starting point. I'm going to call that S. Just put a dot in the middle of your page. And then runs a distance of 7.2 meters in the southeast direction. Um, I'm just going to rub this off for a second, just so it doesn't interfere with my way. Draw a little compass. No, oh, it's not really centered, is it? Draw a little compass, and because it's in the southeast direction, south east, so it's right here. If it says southeast, it means directly southeast, so these two angles are equal. So southeast, we're there now. Maybe I should draw a bit longer for you guys so you can see a bit better. So we're there now. And it's 7.2 meters. That distance is 7.2 meters. Now, how far east has Jane run? So how far east? So we're here now, and I'm going to draw up a triangle just so I can link it up. And I know that that's going to be 90 degrees, so I put it directly like that. And I know that this one's going to be 45 degrees, isn't it? Because it's half of the 90 degrees. Now, how far east has Jane run? We're here. And we're here in, as a finishing point. But if I ask you how much east, I want to know how much directly east I've gone through. So, remember east is this direction. I'm looking for this particular length from here to here because that's the east direction where it identifies my finishing point. Does that make sense? So directly east and where it meets my finishing point. So this distance here, x, is what I want. So how do I find that? Now guys, we've got a right angle triangle, we've got one of the included angles, we've got the, high, um, the length of one of them, which is a hypotenuse in this case, isn't it? And because we want one of the sides, think about it. From the positioning, from the point of view of 45 degrees, x is adjacent side. And we've got, given the hypotenuse, we must use our cos value, remember? So katoa, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. We're going to be using that one. So if I apply that onto this triangle, it's going to be cos 45 equals 2 adjacent x on top over the hypotenuse 7.2 on the denominator. Now, I want to get x, so I need to get rid of my 7.2. So I have to, because we're dividing by 7.2, I need to multiply by 7.2 onto the other side. So x is now remained alone, and it's equal to 7.2 times the cos 45 degrees. Make sense, guys? And then now the last step is just put that into your calculator and you should get something like this. And because it says one decimal place, uh, it's going to be 5.1 to one decimal place. So we can say Jane has run 5.1 meters in the east direction. Ah, makes sense, guys. So those last two questions were more of a practical question, which I want you to guys to be very familiar with because they're very, very examinable questions. So that was the end of compass bearings.